us at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales, a curated 5e Dungeons & Dragons adventure set in the tales of the Yawning Portal campaign module by Wizards of the Coast. Previously on Tavern Tales, still brushing stucco dust from their clothes, even after a long rest in the poisonous gas in the Lost Shrine, our explorers now take their first steps down the hall in the hopes of finding a swift exit from this apparent death trap. Come sit down and drink with the enemy, raise a glass and toast to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my With a few continual flame torches crated, and a fight with some angry ancient spirits inhabiting some stucco figurines, it looked as though our intrepid adventurers, with some fancy door opening antics, have made it out of this cave in. But how deep underground are they? The corridor that jiggers to the left can be dimly made out in the dark as they move through stucco dust. At last, looking about the room, Florida man seeing the catastrophe of stucco. Looked around and said, They really don't make buildings this bad nowadays. Hmm. <laughs> and now let us peek into the adventure itself as we determine the marching order and what they are about to do following this combat in the gloom as we proceed into the next part of the Lost Shrine of Tamochan. Well, party, why don't you introduce yourselves and your characters? And then tell me what you plan to do following this massive combat. I'm Allison, and I'm playing Pennsylvania ah, Jones. <laughs> <She's silly. laughs> the the uh, is part of her culture. She is a terra folk, so she looks like a giant pterodactyl, but with some humanized features. Pretty cool. She's bright green, or well, kind of dark as well. And she is an archaeologist by trade and a bard by other trade. Good day, everyone. My name is Aaron, and I am playing Texas Walker, the Shadarkai Ranger, Monster Slayer. Um, right now, what Tex is going to be doing is trying to find a way to get out of this poison gas somehow, or at least try and find out where it's coming from so we can move away from it. Hi, my name is Chelsea, and I play Maryland Jane, and she is a Genasi, Air Genasi, anthropologist, rogue. So she likes to stab things. And yeah, and she is going to be still not breathing, so not being affected by the poison. Air Genasi can hold their breath indefinitely. This poison isn't affecting her at all, and she is having a good old time. <laughs> is she really? Communicating no, with she's actually signals. stabbed pretty bad. <laughs> She's bleeding a lot. She's got some fountains going on. Hi, I'm Paige, and I am playing Alabama Johnson, who is a cleric, Asimar protector. Every so often, he sprouts his corporeal wings. They're beautiful and radiant like an angel. He is also, along with Tex, attempting to find out how to get the fuck out of here <laughs> so they don't all die this quick. I mean, it's probably going to happen, but... He doesn't want to die from poison. It's sad. Sure. Hello, I am Florida Man, played by Marie Claire, and I am a uh, vengeance paladin human who had a less than model citizen life before I turned to a life of correcting the mistakes of others forcefully, aggressively. Cool. Well, this is our party. Wyoming is in the back. With a wagon and a broken leg and some unconsciousness. Badly wounded. Maybe 30 feet away. You're still in the same room that all the figurines exploded out of. 
that gas when you look down the corridor with your continual flame torches and your dark vision, you can still see the gas. That amber gas is causing all of the light to be, well, purplish, I guess, because you can tell that it it should be red, but the blue flame of the continual flame torches makes everything kind of purplish as a result. If you undertake a long rest right now, you will take three hit points of damage every hour for the duration of the long rest. So that means you will all take, excepting Maryland Jane, 24 hit points worth of damage. But at the end of the eight hours, all of your hit points will be returned to you, so you'll be fine. It's just, do you have 24 hit points to live through the eight hours? I could technically heal us enough to live through the hours. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I have one level three (laughs) spell slot left. (laughs) I also have land hands. Well, because I can cast prayer of healing at Mm. level three, and that will heal the whole party. There's a bard in this group as well. I believe in the bard might have something that helps. I've used up a lot of Song of Rest. I don't have that one. Oh, yes, I do. Lies. Jeez. Sorry. It's on a different thing. I was looking at the wrong thing. I'm just saying, do we want to leave or do we want to But it's only for a short rest, right? So it's... Is it short or long? Oh, oh, yeah. Short rest. Yeah, you'd have to have a short rest before you began your long rests. It's not really effective in this instance. Well, and I don't mind casting Prayer of Healing because I'm going to get my spell slots back. Correct. So I can easily do that. Might be better that way. Because you do Prayer of Healing, then we long rest. Then you get it all back, and then we bounce. Yes. So you do. Thank you. <laughs> Was that in character? No. <laughs> all right, then nothing has happened. <laughs> Nothing's happened. Marilyn doesn't really care what we do. She would rather sleep because it's not going to affect her. <laughs> okay, so what does your character do? Yeah, I'm just going to plank down and start sleeping, I guess. <laughs> all right. Gather up some stucco dust and curl up in a ball. She goes and digs around, finds her pack, which has her bedroll in it, starts okay. to unravel it, goes underneath one of the... Do the alcoves go into the wall or do no, they stick out? Just, they are part of the wall. They're part of the wall? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just stay far away from those, actually. Okay. Just my experience with those so far. That's a good idea. We appreciate that. Yeah. <sighs> How long is a long rest? Eight hours. So our f- plus five will be gone as well. Oh, yeah. Do I have to roll for prayer of healing or because it will pretty much heal us enough for the... Well, if it doesn't heal 24... We're going to die. How much do you have? 11. Because of those extra hit points you gave me. (laughs) So So we're having a long rest. Maryland Jane has curled up into a ball and gone to sleep. Maryland takes the middle watch if you're still doing watches. I don't know if you are or aren't. I can't see anything anyway, so I'm using my continuous flame like torch. Before Maryland goes to sleep, though, she's going to pull out her... <laughs> you already did. I know. I was just going to pull out my little health potion and be like, if this is required, one of you can use it. Try not to, if you can help it, but I understand. Then she goes to sleep. Well, I think we need some healings. If you don't mind, I'm going to cast some healing on all of us from help with Kenny Chowja. Is that all right? All right, all right, all right. Sorry, I just love the accent. That's my <laughs> thing. Sorry. <laughs> cool. Do you have to say the prayer? It's different every time. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> it's just because you didn't write it down. <laughs> well, I feel like like prayers are never going to be the same. Kinnichaoja, we need you in this time of need. My acquaintances here and myself are fairly hurt. And I don't think we're going to make it through this. But if you could just give us the itty bitty tiniest amount of hope and help us through this, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm in. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. 25. Oh. 25 hit points are returned Yay. to the party in a glowing burst of scintillating light has the effervescent motes of Kinijaja alight upon your flesh and heal you of your wounds. Cool. You see the glowing radiance of his eyes alight from somewhere above the head of Alabama to eyes of Kinijaja. Yes, sir. And thus begins your first long rest 
It is painful. It is irritating to your skin as you do continue to take those three points of damage every single hour for the entirety of your long rest. But at the end of it, your hit points are all returned to you and you are all back up to full, just like Maryland Jane is now brought to full as well. Yes. During long rest, I can change my spells, right? Is there anything anyone else would like to do during their long rest? During the long rest, am I able to do a investigation check to maybe see if I can find out where this gas or smoke might be coming from? Sure. Make an investigation check. Seven. You are pretty sure it's everywhere. <laughs> you cannot detect where it might be coming from or how it's seeping places it's just everywhere it's like water yeah so let's all have a drink could i do a nature check to see if what i know about the gas itself sure i believe everyone made these checks before so this i don't think i did a nature check sure i don't I, don't I mean, everybody made checks about the gas That's before true. and failed abhorrently. So what did you do? 13? Uh, no, still have no idea. It's gas. And it hurts. I'm not doing anything other than standing watch and then resting when it's my turn. Cool. Does anybody eat anything during their long rest? Because it is a long rest. You will need sustenance to Rations? carry you over on the next part of the journey. Florida man is like, eat some food, damn it. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> you share a meal. Does anybody talk during this meal? When Florida man approaches me with the food, I look at Florida man. I raise an eyebrow, which Florida man, having hung out with me apparently this little bit, has learned my eyebrow language to leave the food yep. on the ground and walk away. Yeah, like like a cagey animal. Florida man just like sets down, hands up, so there's no like threatening <laughs> action. <laughs> And like walks away doing an eyebrow wiggle as she walks backwards. <laughs> Remember, you all spent like a week on the road. With I know each this other is how too. we communicate. Yeah, okay. It's our eyebrow language. It's yes. on the sticky note right in front of me. I know. <laughs> I wrote the sticky note. I like the sticky notes. I was just trying to incorporate it. I, I was happy about it. <laughs> Maryland is going to go up to the door that we had just pulled off its hinges. And check and see if there's any traps around that door before we cross through. There are no traps around the door before you cross through. Or there are traps on the other side of the door. All right. You can spend a couple minutes and check. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Gotta do that. Go for it. 19. Oh. There are no traps on the other side of the door that you're able to detect and find. After spending several minutes looking, you do see that the stone walls of this corridor are carved to resemble a stack of bamboo-like logs and the passage slopes downwards from where you're wa where you are now towards further recesses that you cannot make out uh, due to the ineffective quality of the continual flame light all right i am gonna go back to the group see what everybody is doing and relay this information okay do that hey guys um through the door there's like a hallway that goes down. So we should probably go and check that out. The walls are kind of cool looking, like bamboo or something. They're going for that natural look. I appreciate that. I mean, the archaeologist might like it. Maybe. I just care about if it's going out. I need <laughs> out. I don't know about you, but I can't go this long without flying. I don't like confined spaces. I'd agree with that. I don't feel free. And we should all be free. Yeah, I went there. I don't fly. I levitate. It's different. Would it be any advantage for us to be able to see further? Possibly. You can only see 20 feet ahead of you. You'll be creeping through this. But if we did it too far, then we might indicate our presence to hostiles. We're going to indicate it anyways. We're a glowing ball of light. Well, but that light could get bigger. <laughs> if we needed it to <laughs> daylight yes yeah, yeah, i like that i like that <laughs> but i was just curious of if i cast that if that will put us in combat faster <laughs> than if i didn't it means things are gonna be farther away that we'll be able to see them rather than closer to us yeah what's the benefit to daylight that you're thinking? It is 60 feet of radiant light and 60 feet of dim light. I, I don't know that it's worth it right now. We're kind of dungeon crawling, but... 
Maybe save your spells for because we don't know what stuff is coming. So I was thinking, I got this spell that Kenny Chow Jaw bestowed upon me, and it's called Daylight. And uh, basically, you know, it's pretty dark down here, and I don't really like the dark. I like the sunshine. So I could basically make it a bright sunny day. Then we can actually see the stupid rocks we're tripping on over. Or we could just, like, spread out with the torches. We would then have to be 20 feet apart from each other, and I don't think that's a great idea. Daylight does sound good. But then we run, we run the risk of having people being able to see us with the daylight we're carrying around. Should we put it to a vote? <laughs> Wait a second. I'm not a spell person or a magic person, but isn't there something like, if you use your spell, then you can't use a different one? I believe you are sometimes correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just proceed cautiously as much as possible using our perceptive abilities to scan the hallway and save our magical endowed godlike powers for when we actually need them. All right. Don't want to see. Got it. (laughs) We have our torches. Maybe we can get to the real daylight. That'd be better. What's the distance on daylight? 60 feet radiant and then 60 feet dim. Yeah. So 120 feet. Yeah. Is that worthwhile? Well, so right, six. So right now, you're getting twenty feet of ability to see at all, and beyond that, you don't get anything. Fine. And then in this instance here, what you're getting is uh, sixty feet of normal rolls that you get to make in combat and fighting and whatnot, and then sixty feet further of uh, having disadvantage on your attacks, and then. The other 60 feet, beyond anything beyond that, the 120, you, you have to make perception checks to be able to hit anything at all. Why didn't I take dark vision? <laughs> you picked the wrong. Even dark vision would be <laughs> like the uh, the rules I've been playing with dark vision have been incorrect in the past, especially when it comes to being in darkness. Fine. Cast your daylight. We need to see its thing. Because I'm thinking in here, there's essentially zero light. If we didn't have our torches, there'd be... Zero light at Correct. all? Correct. Yeah. Zero light. That makes sense. So if you had dark vision, you'd have disadvantage on any attacks that you'd make in the dark within that certain range, 30 mm-hmm. or 60 feet or whatever you have. And then you'd be making perception checks to try to hit anything further beyond that. So the gloom is spell. oppressive. All right. I'll cast my spell. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Alabama pulls his winter blanket out of his bag and he says, Can it jaw jaw? I'm going to need you again, and I'm real sorry for interrupting your day once again, because this is twice in a very short amount of time. But if you would be so kind to bless this winter blanket with the light of day, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm in. And the winter blanket begins to glow. It's opaque. You can no longer see the color of the blanket. It's just sunlight. Alabama takes it very proud of himself and he ties it around his neck and it's his cape. Well, you're not be able to see too much in it's front behind of you. you. And as he notices that, he moves it to the front. <laughs> and it's now like a bib. You have a glowing bib? <laughs> yes. Can you make it a snuggie? <laughs> <laughs> a blanket with arms? And he is radiant sunlight. <laughs> First new invent is the snuggie in this world was lynched and tarred and feathered. <laughs> And then put in their Snuggie and set on fire. So no no one makes a Snuggie in this world. Slank it? So Alabama has a glowing daylight bib. <laughs> yes. That he is very excited to have. Yes. It says red lobster on it. And it's nice because when we need it to be just a still object, he can throw it on the ground and it lights up the room and then he picks it back up and moves with it. Or if he needs to mute it, he can just turn the blanket around. Yes. And it'll glow his insides. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you are like- suffused with the warm, <laughs> radiant light of Kinich Aja, who has uh, chosen to accept the casting of daylight upon a blanket. What kind of daylight day is it? Is it like a gloomy day? It is, is it a happy the- day? It's a very happy day. The gloriousness of perfect noon. Oh, nice. It's very bright. It's like, oh, can you turn that blanket down a little bit? <laughs> I kind of, I kind of hung over. <laughs> now, what is interesting is that you can, it, while it does not provoke any actual material dice challenge or rule set complication, I would like you to all to think and p- 
picture this daylight hitting the gas itself and causing it so you like scintillating moats like when it's really dusty in your house and the lights coming through directly and you see them all in the light that's what you see so it's not provoking any disabilities or disadvantage on any attacks or anything like that but it does create things that are being seen betwixt you and whatever it is you're looking to see what's the marching order you gather up your supplies and you begin to make your way out of this room down the only corridor available to you I'll walk in the middle so that I can cast light to everybody. And the people in the back don't get left behind. Tex will be in the back. Uh, Maryland Jane will be at the front. And Penny will be just behind Maryland. Which makes Florida Man fourth in line. About 15 feet in front of you, the wall opens up on the left-hand side as you're proceeding down. Uh, the light's casting to that full distance so you can see it hits a corridor stop a wall it hits a wall directly in front of you as you're moving so the corridor definitely turns suddenly a 90 degree turn to the left as maryland comes up to that corner she's going to very cautiously sneak along the side using her stealthy abilities to peek around the corner and hopefully remain undetected by any thing creature humanoid or non-humanoid around that that might be there. The light from daylight does not cast around the corner with you, so you cannot d- make out anything in the distance of the corridor's length of the hallway. I take one of the torches with continual flame and I throw the torch down the hall. Sure. You throw the torch down the hall and it lights up a 10 foot wide hallway that is about 30 feet tall all the way down the passageway but i think you could throw about 20 30 feet and it ends up in the middle there and it casts light upon beaten bronze doors that are at the end of that hallway it is an empty hallway does it still feel like poisonous in the air oh yes okay i don't like this maryland is gonna go after the torch very cautiously being very alert while she's doing so okay are we letting maryland go on her own or are we all proceeding apace I'll proceed, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll follow behind you. Well, if Tex is saying yes, that means he's pushing everybody forward. (laughs) Tex is in fifth position. (laughs) Let go. (laughs) Also, he's in Dancer's fifth position. (laughs) Good luck moving in that position. (laughs) Isn't that like heels together and arms up? Oh, no, there's different positions for legs and different positions for arms. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but is fifth heels? Fifth is one heel to your toe, and your feet are basically like this. Yeah, okay, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. It, well, I, except more so, because that would technically be third. Fifth and third are very similar. They're almost flat against each other. Is there going to be more figurines that come to life? I'm keeping an eye out for those figurines, by the way. As you get close. Well, yeah, the whole entire series of walls is just bamboo logs. Just looks like it's all been carved on both sides to look like bamboo logs. The doors you're walking towards are worked to resemble a forest of seaweed. Cool. Tinged and banged and dented with little hammers into this beautiful image, which is of course, I'm giving that back to you because you're, you're casting daylight and they glow because they're bronze shining right back at you. It is beautiful. Remember, Maryland, you can look, but don't touch. <laughs> Those are museum rules. You should know that. Maryland walks forward, picks up her torch, and you proceed ahead. At which point, terrible things happen. Oh, man. To be expected. Dun, dun, dun. The people who are in first and second position need to make dexterity saving throws. Hoo-hoo. How'd you do? 22. Cool. How did you do? 16. It's like hallway arrows or something stupid. I was going to yell guidance, but I was too slow. Guidance. <laughs> guidance. Probably cut, like, some <laughs> floor, floor oh, sorry. Everyone needs to make oh, these saving throws. Guidance! <laughs> Help as a bonus action. <laughs> Cannot make guidance on saving throws. Oh, man. Oh, no! All right. <laughs> Alabama's gonna die. All right. <laughs> All that healing for nothing. All right. <laughs> I got a 16. 
several logs swing out from the walls and buffet the party. Ella Endor, Jimmy Buffett? Anyone who did not make a 15 <laughs> on the saving throw takes seven bludgeoning damage Ouch. as they are nailed by these logs and driven backwards. I assume that aid's gone. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. AIDS. yeah it's long gone. Actually, they found a cure. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> You're not boo. happy that they found a cure for AIDS? <laughs> like, I am. I am. I made a big donation to them. Thank you very much. <laughs> and sorry, that was seven damage, you say, Kyle? Seven bludgeoning damage. I was just a... Who <laughs> succeeded on the 15? I did. Cool. You take three points of bashing oh. damage. And you're all driven back as the logs slam into place. And there is no longer a way forward. I would like to look around and try to see what caused that, what, like, what trap we sprung. Like, something in the floor, something in the wall, something we might have okay, detected so that we were there. you're looking in the floor to see if there was something that's in the floor that's caught that, you, like, what sort of thing might you be looking for? Like, a plate that went Perfect, down, yeah, you can go like look that. for a, a pressure plate or something yeah. like that. How did you do on your investigation check? Seven. That it, no, you do not find said plate of pressure. So Fine. you begin to check the wall? Yeah. Okay. Can I roll again? Yeah, what are you looking for on the wall? So if you don't really know what you're looking for, the game asks you to make a perception check. Okay. And if you know you're looking for something specific, then you would make an investigation check. Okay. An investigation check would be like, I'm looking for a copy of the Bible in the hotel room. That would be an investigation check. Mm-hmm. A, I'm looking for signs of a struggle in a hotel room would be a perception check. Okay, I like to do a perception check. Perfect, yes. You want to you wanna find signs of struggle. Twelve. Still nothing for you. Well, all those good Can ones. I <laughs> do a perception check along the walls to see if there's anything out of the ordinary that might indicate a door or a lever or a... Oh, you'd like to look for some way to reset these or fix this situation? Yeah. Or help you out? Yes. Before you roll, you're a cleric. So would you like to take an action to grant yourself a D4 guidance? <laughs> Tessicar is not your god. If Tessicar was your god, then you could just shout out guidance in an old man voice. And of course, the god of guidance named Tessicar would grant that immediately to you. He will make a return. It will happen. <laughs> it's always been Tessicar's like hidden goal is to become a god. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> right? Cool. That's why he sw- sold his soul for power anyways. To a goat. To a goat god. He wanted to absorb the goat. Sometimes you got to start on the bottom and then, you know, through hard work and effort, you work your way up. Really, being a warlock is just the American way. Yes. Alabama holds his forearm up towards the ceiling of the cave. Yeah. And he says, Kenna Jao Jao. I know I've called on you quite a bit recently, and I really hope you still love me and have me in your heart. But at this time, I would like to ask for your guidance to assist me on my journey and find something that went wrong. Amen. Okay. As he says it, his symbol on his arm starts to glow. Ooh. 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 24. You spend the minute or so looking around trying to see if you can spot some way to reset this or fix this. There are no levers. There are no buttons. There are no uh, resets on these logs. They are well and firmly slammed into place, and they are heavy. Can we get past them? Can I fireball them? (laughs) Fireball! (laughs) You and making light. Just want to make light everywhere. That's the co- that's what I am. I'm a light cleric. I want to burn the <laughs> I just want to burn this. Not only am I a cleric of light, I am also ground. an angel. Right? No, you're oh, not. Lots of light. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, I'd also kill everyone. So that's awkward. Yeah, if you're gonna do fireball, you want to limit that shit. I found that the hard way. Yeah, it's twenty foot radius. So I probably don't want to cast Fireball. Well, you could back everyone up and then cast Fireball. I mean, you can still cast Fireball and not hurt people. That's very easy to do. That's true. Because that would burn all of the logs, too. 
ash. Oh, it would explode the logs is what it would do. I mean, they're not going to, it doesn't really like burn things up. It causes explosive force and would fire all the logs all over the place. Might bring the ceiling down, but. Then we could get out. You could live with that. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Or I'd die doing it. (laughs) Maybe. While um, Alabama is thinking about casting Fireball, what, and, and of course Penny has spent some time looking at some stuff here, what are Florida Man and Tex doing? Florida Man is attempting to figure out how to get through the logs and make sure that like everybody is safe for the next little bit. So there's only around. a six inch gap in between the logs as they've slammed into place all along. Can I like cut off the log or is it like a chain or whatever you see might be in the walls that have caused these to slam forward. So these logs, all you see is just big slams of, of wood. Oh, what's that game where you have the sticks and there's the balls. There. Log what jam. I was thinking like log, pickup sticks. Log but... jam. Anyway, sure. I you can picture that. Punk. But that that's where there's stuff in the On sticks. On top are, and you pull the sticks But I never, out. I wasn't talking about that. Oh. Yeah, sorry. So that's what I did. <laughs> I was thinking about pickup sticks where they're all like together and you're trying to like flick sticks out or whatever. It, anyway, sticks are all jammed up into each other. And I don't see any way like to cut them down or. You tell me. I want to try to cut them down or cut them apart so that we can make our way through. Okay. Yeah. You can make a strike against some of the logs. I'm very strong. Do you have a slashing weapon? I have a long sword. That's a slashing weapon, so yes. I also have hand axes, so I'm going to use that hand axes. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Yeah, I got two you of them. You have advantage on the strike. Uh, roll, roll your damage. Florida man begins to chop violently at the logs that Eight. are in there and does some damage and cuts a log, splinters, rain, and file. What are you going to do, Tex? As Florida man cuts the logs... Um, Tex is going to clear out like the debris that Florida Man is creating by chopping these logs. Cool. Just so that we have kind of a clearer path. All right. You see that? It's going to take you a while, probably half an hour if one person is clearing and two people are chopping. It'll take you half an hour to clear these logs away to get enough space to get out, get through this juncture. How long will Fireball take us to get through? <laughs> Fireball will take six seconds. But there is a strong potential of the roof falling in on you or falling in over there and then making it even worse trying to get out. Also, I don't know about this gas, but if it's at all flammable (laughs) (laughs) for everybody, that'd be funny (laughs) when we all get to make new characters. (laughs) I will join Alabama will join Florida man in slashing. Cool. You got a slashing weapon. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. You pull out your hand axes and you begin to cut at the logs. It is tiring, grueling work. While this half an hour passes, what are Penny and Maryland Jane up to? At first, Penny is like trying to find other ways and still like looking for anything, but is unsuccessful. So in her frustration, she pulls out her miner's pick and starts doing what she can sure. with Take, take a break and, and step in for somebody else. Yeah. yeah. There's only, it's 10 feet across, so there's really only room for two people okay. at any given time. But finally, eventually, you cut through the logs, and uh, after doing so, the rest of the logs then slam into place again. And you are, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's so sad. <laughs> uh, that is actually what happens, but uh, you all are able to squeeze and slide and push the rest of those logs now that they're significantly lighter out of the way. Good news, you have a lot of firewood. Bad news, you all take three points of damage. Because well, of not Mary Land Jane, because not poison. Ah, <laughs> a bull. <laughs> We'll find a way to poison you. Hey. Oh, I mean, it's super easy. <laughs> I just have to start breathing. Just All she just air. has to be is just injected with venom and then she'll be poisoned. <laughs> Noted. Because she's, <laughs> she's not immune to poison. I know. She just doesn't breathe. <laughs> if I become incapacitated, then I yeah. stop I am- holding my breath. Eh, I'm just going to say that you don't breathe. Oh, okay. 
it just you makes it easier for me for the context your... of this story. If I really want you dead, I can do so with slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning weapons. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, well then. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> yes, Mr. DM. <laughs> There's other ways to slay a character. Now yeah. that these logs are gone. Exactly. The door? The door. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales, a curated Dungeons & Dragons 5e game set in the Tales of the Yawning Portal Adventure module by Wizards of the Coast. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at Bad Billy Band. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at Tavern underscore Tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure.